Hi lovies, I'm Drea and I'm back for another Designs by Drea. Embroider with me? We're gonna embroider along today. You're gonna embroider with me. Let's do some, what, embroidery? And this channel? Since when? Just kidding. That's really what I do guys. If you're new here, consider clicking the subscribe button. I hope you won't regret it, so go ahead and do that. Take a second to like this video and give it a big thumbs up. So when you go down there, smash the like button. I greatly appreciate it. Every time you hit that like button, it does help me find more viewers like you. I need to find my people. Help me find my people by hitting that subscribe button and that like button so that way YouTube can refer me to more people like your lovely self. I mean, I'd love more of you here on my channel. Why the heck not? The more the merrier, guys. Let's get out there. So today, we're doing, like I said, an embroider along with me, and we're gonna be working on a zombie cupcake. Because yes, guys, it's Halloween. And no, I'm not over it. So from here on out, you might be seeing a lot of holiday-related items from me. I hope you're as festive as I am, because I'm all for it. So we're gonna be doing this. I'm going to cut my, um, I'm gonna cut my base uh, out of a square because I plan to repurpose it later. I'm going to do a separate video on how to make a removable uh, slip cover for your throw pillows. This year I'm going next level on decorations. I always add to my decorations from the previous year. Well this year we're decorating all the pillows. And so we're going to use split designs and applique designs to make that happen in my house. And for now we're just going to go ahead and work on this square which in a subsequent video we'll make the cover for. So don't worry guys, we'll get there one thing at a time. Let's make the square. So get all your stuff ready, uh, get all your embroidery supplies, make sure you have your machine well oiled because we're about to get to it. Okay, so I've decided that I'm going to use a yellow thread to tack down all of our applique pieces, mainly so you can see it because I thought white on white would be a little hard to see on camera. So I do have uh, my colors picked out. I have uh, pink for the brains, I have orange for the ooze, and I want to do my cupcake liner in this really fun black print. So we're going to get started. When you see the yellow stitching, that's where we're going to place on top of first our cupcake liner. Okay, so when you when you when you prep your fabrics to applique, you can do it a few different ways. You can do it with SF 101. You can do it with the featherweight um, in interfacing that you can iron on, or I used heat and bond. What it is is you um, go ahead and iron it on, and then when you peel it off, it has this shininess, and this shininess is actually adhesive. And when it's heated, it will adhere. So it's like fabric glue. So I'm going to go ahead and float it over my yellow stitches and we're going to go ahead and run our placement stitches. Okay, now that this is complete, um, we're going to go ahead and cut out. Cut as close as you can to the stitches without busting the stitches. So if you are able to do this, you can do it while it's still hooped, um, while it's still hooped on the machine, but I'm actually going to remove the hoop from the machine, cut it at my uh, desk, and then I'm gonna put it back on so we can go ahead and run the next step, which will be appliquing on our ooze. Okay, so now we're going to do the placement stitching for our ooze. Okay, so here's my orange ooze. I backed this with SF101. It is a Palon interfacing that you can iron on. I chose this for a variety of reasons. One was that I knew that it might have some overlapping with the black, and because of that, um, it's kind of see-through. So I wanted to try to make it not be as opaque. So I'm hoping this will help with that. And also the SF-101 provides like the stiffness and a different level of stability that I'm hoping will hold up with the satin stitching we're going to do. So let's go ahead and tack down our ooze. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so similar to the um, cupcake lining, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut this out. So please cut around, again, cut as close as you can to the bean stitching without actually busting the stitches. Okay, friends, so here we go. I've cut it out. We got our ooze all cut out. Um, next thing is we're gonna start to stitch out the placement for our brains on the top of our cupcake. Okay, so let's get our brain color. In my case, this like calling it bubblegum pink. I don't know. And we're gonna float it over. This is also lined with the Pellon SF101, which like I said is a fusible interfacing. It does give some stability to this, um, if you can tell. It doesn't just fall all the way over, it has some kind of stability. Always cover, make sure all the placement stitches are covered, and I'm just going to let it float because it's pretty sturdy, so I don't need to do much other than just lay it down and start stitching. Okay, so this is our last applique piece. I'm going to take my hoop off of the machine. I'm going to trim up my brains, and then I'm gonna go ahead and bring it back, and we're gonna start stitching out all of our satin stitches. Okay, so our brains are cut out. Next, we're starting up our series of satin stitching. So since I'm going into the satin stitches, the color of the thread is super important. So I need to make sure that I change out every color to the color that I want to outline each of the applique items. First up is going to be the lining of our cupcake. I have chosen black, so let's run that black and line our cupcake liner. Okay, so our next set of satin stitch stitching is going to be part of our ooze. So here's the deal, I broke up the ooze into two separate steps because I wanted some ooze to hang here, here, and down here, but then I wanted this big old glob to go on top of the bar that goes across. So you're gonna see orange twice. You're gonna see it one time to do this section, and down here, then we're gonna do the green, and then we're gonna do the orange because I'd like for it to give the impression that it's falling on top of the bar that separates our split design. So that's what you're going to see it twice. You're gonna see it one time now, which we're gonna run, then we're going to do the bars, and then we're gonna go ahead and do the ooze that's dripping over. So let's go ahead and run that first oozy satin stitch. Okay, as we discussed, now we're going to switch over to the bars that make up our split design. So the bars are the ones that go across here and that actually break up the design. So I've chosen a lime green, so we're gonna go ahead and stitch that out. So I have switched back to our ooze color, which is orange, and I'm gonna go ahead and run it out, and it's gonna finish off this little drip of ooze right here, and then we'll head on next to our brains.
Okay, so now we're on the applique step for our brains on our brain cupcake. So we're almost there, almost there. This is the last applique piece. So this will be the last of the satin stitching for our appliques. So let's go ahead and run our gooey brains and all of the fine details. Okay, so here we go. These are our brains. Look how beautifully that's stitched out. Now we're gonna go ahead and stitch out a little bat stick. That's a little decorative thing right here. So go ahead and switch that out. My bat is going to be black. So this is going to be a little decoration on our little brain treat. Okay, so here we are. This is the design. This is our zombie cupcake. This is what it looks like. So this is what you'll get in the file. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I have added a name to this, which is mine. Again, does not come in the does not come in the file. This is something you do separately on your own and you add it into your design. So this is the finished product, and now I'm gonna go ahead and personalize this one just for me. So this is just a little bit of an extra zhuzhuzh that we're gonna do, so that way you get to see how it looks with a name. And here you have it, all stitched out. How cute is that? I'm going to use this, like I said, to make a pillow case that's going to be removable for my uh, throw pillows on my living room for the holidays. Of course. All right, friends, I hope you had a great time when this new Embroider Along With Me series, because why not? I'm gonna start to do this more often. I've decided when I put designs out there, I'm gonna also film an embroider along with me. Um, for those of you who appreciate the extra content, and also for those of you who may be new to embroidery, um, and you buy the file from me, you can embroider along with me. I know I give you PDF tutorials on how to do these things, but let's be honest, it's boring. Who wants to read that and look at the pictures? When you can watch a video and either do it alongside with me or watch it beforehand, do it yourself, or watch it when you get stuck on a part. I mean, that's just what it is. I'm gonna try to get it figured out to where I can start to put timestamps in the first comment, so that way you guys can have an easier time finding certain steps. So if you already have the file and you're stuck on a certain step, go ahead and click on that and you'll go right to that part and you don't have to worry about trying to find it within the video. So that's something I'm gonna work on bringing for you guys. Or if you're like me, sometimes I just like to watch people embroider. It is what it is. Sometimes I like to check out your fabrics. I like to see the cute thread you're using. Um, I like to see what you got going on. I mean, hey, who can blame a girl? Sometimes it's just soothing. Some people like to watch people eat. Some people like to watch people embroider. It just is what it is. So I hope that this video was very helpful and insightful to you. I hope that you consider coming back. And again, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, I hope I finally convinced you to do so. So take a second and before you X out of this video, give it a big like and subscribe to this channel. Make sure that little bell right next to the subscription button is in fact turned on. That means that every time I upload a video, YouTube will give you a notification so that way you know, hey, there's a new video. Come on to YouTube and let's check it out. So until next time, friends, bye-bye.